you never mentioned him before, Frank. Who, oh, Tommy? You wouldn't have known Tommy Morris. He worked in the warehouse at Bristol's. Fine strapping lad he was, too. And he left? That's right. Couldn't stand the machinery. Oh, he made everything by hand up to then. But suddenly one morning, there it was. A bloody great machine that could do the work of ten men in half the time. <laughs> Tommy couldn't cope with that. You managed. I had no choice, Martha. It was either that or no job at all. You could have joined the army, same as Tommy. That's what Tommy wanted me to do. But I couldn't, could I? I had my old man to look after, and by the time he died, I'd met you. You don't regret that, do you? Of course not. What's all this about? Ever since I mentioned Tommy Morris, you've done nothing but nag and ask questions. I'm sorry. He's an old friend. We were close when we worked at Bristol. That was 21 years ago. You haven't seen him since. What difference does that make? I'm not sure. It just seems strange to me that a man who spent all those years in India and places like that should want to settle back in a small place like this. It's his home, isn't it? Where else would he go? Well, I wish you'd consulted me before inviting him here. What's the matter with you, Martha? I meet an old friend in a pub, someone I haven't seen for years, and I invite him home for a drink. Is there something wrong with that? No. Then what's got into you? I don't know, Frank. Call it fancy, if you will. But it gives me an uneasy feeling. There's something not right. <laughs> something not right. Now, what kind of talk is that, Martha? If you see a black cat in the road, it makes you uneasy. Two jackdaws in a bush send you into hysterics. And when Denny Johnson lost a back tooth ten years ago, you were convinced he'd be dead in a week. He's 90 years old now, and he's still running around like a two-year-old. Maybe. What you need is to go to India yourself. It might broaden your outlook. I'm perfectly happy where I am, thank you. I don't need to go anywhere else. Are you sure? Yes. I've got a fine roof over my head, and I've got my son. What more do I want? What about me? Oh, we've got each other. That goes without saying. Does it? Frank... Frank. Yes. I'm sorry if I nag. I don't mean to. I know. And you are happy, aren't you? Content. Yes, Martha. I'm content. It's just that you spend your whole life doing the same thing day after day and suddenly a door opens and you wonder what you've missed. You should have heard his stories, Martha. The places he's been to, the things he's seen. What have I achieved? After 40 years at Bristol's, what have I got? You've got everything, Frank. You just don't realise it since you met him again. Martha! No, Frank. He's got nothing. Neither chick, nor child, nor a roof he can call his own. We've got those things. We haven't got this house yet. I still owe 200 pounds on the mortgage. Don't worry about that. In a few years from now, that'll be paid off. On my pension? We'll manage. What we've got is solid, Frank. It's safe. We don't need anything else. Yes, Martha. Frank, hold me for a minute. Just hold me. Yes, Martha. Ma! Ma! Oh. Yes, Richard, what is it? Have you seen my clean overalls anywhere? They're in the airing cupboard. I can't see them. On the top shelf. I got them. Everything's fine, Frank. We've got everything we want right here. Well, say it, Frank. Please. Yes, Martha. We've got everything we want right here. Your deal. Thanks. What is that noise? A garden gate. The hinge is broken. Let's get around to fixing it. <laughs> You've been saying that for ages. Mm. Oh, I saw that old buddy of yours today. 
At least I think it was him. He was standing in the yard outside Bristow's. Doing what? Oh, nothing as far as I could see. <laughs> Just staring at the warehouse wall. Probably thinking of the time he worked there, that's all. He's an odd looking character. And what's odd about him? You're getting as bad as your mother. She hasn't seen him at all yet and she's got the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Would you like a drink? Oh, uh, no thanks. You go ahead. I'm a night shift at 12 and I need a clear head for that cutting machine. Chop, chop. <laughs> you know, Tommy hated that machine from the first minute he saw it. Do you know what he did? He stood right up on the folding bench, raised his two hands in the air and cursed it three times. He left after that. <laughs> I don't blame him. He probably cursed you too for not going with him. <laughs> Why do you say that? There's no way I could have gone with Tommy. He knew that. Maybe if things had been different, I would have gone with him. Uh, no point thinking about that now. Cheers. Uh, cheers, Dad. You do. How old was he when he left Bristol? Ah, oh, I don't know. About your age, I think. Old enough to join the army, anyway. Why do you ask? Just thinking. About the army? Now, you forget about that. The army's no place for you. You want to kill your mother? She'd never forgive you if you did that. Oh, I can't stand Bristol's all my life, Dad. I did. Yes, yeah, I know it's boring. Oh, come on, it's more than that. All I do is cut paper. Chop, chop. The pulp is fed in at one end of the machine, and I stand at the other end, and when the paper roll is long enough, I cut it. Chop, chop. <laughs> God, you could go mad doing the like of that. A few more years at Bristol's won't do you any harm. After that, you can do what you like. Yes, Dad. Twist. Stick. <laughs> hey, 21. <laughs> Pontoon. And fivers only. Not my night. <laughs> Doesn't look like anybody's night, the way the weather's shaping up. You think he'll come? Tommy? Ah, yes, I know Tommy. If he says he'll come, he will. We were that close. Come in, come in. You must be soaked. Here, let me take your coat. Ah, oh, great, great. There we are. My son Richard was wondering whether you'd venture out at all in a night like this, but I knew you would. Oh, it's rough enough. Come on into the pond and get some heat into your bones. Oh, yeah. Here we are. I told you you'd come, didn't I, Richard? Tommy, this is my wife Martha and my son Richard. Hello. He works at Bristol's now. Yes, I saw you today. Oh, at the window? Where else, boy? Good evening, Mom. It's a pleasure to meet you. Evening. Sit down there, Tommy. Uh, Close up to the fire and get some heat into your bones. Uh, Would you like something to drink? Whiskey. There's a fine drop of porter here if you prefer that. Whiskey. That for me. Certainly. Whiskey it is. Uh, how about you, Martha? No, thank you. Then it'll be just the two of us, Tommy. Like old times. The boy not drinking. Oh, not tonight, Mr. Morris. I'm a night shift at 12, and I need a clear head. The machines? That's right. Those machines ought to be blowing up. I cursed the first one. Oh, so my father told me. Ah, here you are, Tommy. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Cheers, old friend. Ah. You know something, boy? What? When I worked at Bristol's, we made things by hand. There's an art in that. There's no art in a machine. When that monster moved in, I moved out. I could have died there. My husband hasn't died, Mr. Morris. He's made a good living out of Bristol. Is that a fact? I'm glad to hear it, ma'am. A contented man is to be admired. I've never met one before. You look contented enough yourself, Tommy. I did what was right. I always did that. My dad says you've been to India. I have. And many more places besides. And um, uh, have you seen lots of strange things, Mr. Morris? I have. Tell us about them, Tommy. 
It would take a lifetime, old friend. The boring sands of the Sahara Desert. The Taj Mahal in India. The Tomb of Christ in Palestine. And other things too. Along the northwest frontier, men dead with bullet holes in their eyes and their tongues torn out. Men with their legs blown off and their arms scattered in the foul air. I've seen all those things and many more. Not fit to mention. That's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Ma. It's enough. I don't want to hear about those things. Nobody does. You're quite right, Mom. It's not fit for decent company. Perhaps you'd be more interested in uh, a wee bit of magic. Magic? magic. Ah, ah, it's uh, something I picked up in India. Uh, would you uh, care to examine it? What is it? Well, as you can see, nothing extraordinary. Just a monkey's paw. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, uh, it's wizened. Mummified. Let me have a look. It's peculiar, all right. And it's magic, is it? That's right. It belonged to an old fakir who lived in India. And this man, a holy man he was, lived on the highest mountain in India for 40 years. During that time, he never closed his eyes to sleep. He never spoke to another living human being. He only had the one friend. A monkey. And when the monkey died... The old man devoured the flesh and scattered the bones to the four winds. He did, however, retain one part of the monkey. The monkey's paw. And he had that mummified. And this is the paw? It is. And how is it magic? This old man believed that fate ruled people's lives. And that those who interfered with it did so to their sorrow. So he cast a spell on the monkey's paw, so that three separate men could each have three wishes from it. At their peril. Did you have three wishes? I did. And, and were they granted? Oh, why? They were granted. Uh, has anyone else wished, Mr. Morris? The first man had his three wishes. Yes. Now, I don't know what the first two were. The third wish was for death. That's how I got the monkey's paw. The man died? With a mouth twisted in his skull. As if he'd seen something. Jesus. Holy God. Well, if you've had your three wishes, Tommy, it's no good to you now. What do you keep it? Yeah. Fancy. More than fancy, I think, Mr. Morris. If you say so, Mom. Can I have it? No, Frank. If fancy is all it is, and Mr. Morris has no further use for it, throw it on the fire. Burn it. If that is your wish, Mom. I have no wish, Mr. Morris. It's entirely up to yourself. Then, so be it. <laughs> no! Let me have it, Tommy. Let me have it. Let me have it! I threw it on the fire. If you keep it, don't blame me for what happens. I won't. Show me how it works. Show me. Show me! Very well. Hold the paw in your right hand and wish it out. But I warn you of the consequences. Your wife there is witness to that. I am no witness, Mr. Morris. Three wishes. That's correct, old friend. Let me see. Come to think of it, I didn't know what to wish for. Richard! Uh, I don't know, Da. Martha! Come on, love. What will I wish for? Nothing. You don't need anything. You know that. Everyone needs something. Mom. I don't. I've got everything I need right here, Mr. Morris. If so, I envy you, Mom. Yes. I believe you do. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have things to do in the kitchen. Good night, Mr. Morris. Mom? I'm sorry about that, Tommy. Martha gets upset very easily. It's of no consequence now. Well, he tells a good yarn, I'll say that for him. Did he leave it behind? The monkey's paw? Oh, 
I offered to buy it from him, but he refused. What did he say? He said... I had asked him for it three times, and that was all that was required. He wanted rid of it. You think so? Mm, no way of going about it. He hates you, Frank. I could see it plain. Martha, for God's sake, the man is my friend. He held my hand when he left and put his arm around me. He's just a bit strange, that's all. And why should he hate you? I have no idea, but it's there. That man bleeds hate. He came for one reason, to give you that paw. And now you've got it. You're a foolish man, Frank. I was never that. Then burn the paw. No. I won't give in to that nonsense. You'll rue the day. I'll say no more. It's quarter to twelve. Time Richard was leaving for work. Richard! It's a quarter to twelve. Yeah, I know. I'm on my way. Are you two still on about that monkey's paw? Your mother is. You really didn't believe all that rubbish, did you, Ma? Hello, I'll admit, he had me going for a while. And me. I know what I'm saying. Well, you can easily test it, eh? I mean, make a wish, and if nothing happens, well, that's it. You think I should? You know what I think. <laughs> wish for a case of whiskey, Dad. <laughs> if I'm going to wish, I'd want something more than that. Where well, I know. You still owe 200 pounds in the house. Wish for that. Now, that would be useful. Well, go on, Da. All right. Where is it? Here it is. Now then. Was it the right hand, he said? Well, I think so. Right. I wish for 200 pounds. <laughs> Frank. It moved. It turned my hand like a snake and moved. I didn't see anything. Nor me. Didn't you hear it? Well, let's have a look at it. Don't touch it. I never saw anything like it. I what? think the whole thing is insane. What do you mean insane? You're the one who believed in it. And it moved, I tell you. I didn't see it. It was just your fancy. I told you to throw it on the fire. I wish I had. I'm going to bed. The time you were at work. Good night, son. And God bless. Good night, Ma. You coming, Frank? In a minute. Well, don't be too long. <sighs> Well, I have to be going too, Da. Hey, you'll probably find that £200 under your pillow when you go inside. <laughs> and something horrible squatting on top of the wardrobe watching you pocket your ill-gotten gains. <laughs> Night, Da. I'll see you in the morning, eh? Good night, son. Hi. It moved. I know it moved. I must say, it's extraordinary the way things affect you during the night. In the cold light of dawn, it does seem a bit silly. What did you do with the paw? Ah, I don't know. It's inside somewhere. I'll get rid of it later. You should have got rid of it last night. Ah, well, no harm done. Is Richard not back from work yet? No. He's probably doing a bit of overtime. He said he might turn an extra few bob. Good for him. Mind you, that two hundred pounds would have come in handy, all right. We're better off without it. Would you like some tea? Might as well. This gate has fallen to bits. It's been like that since we came here. The wood's rotten. Oh, aye. Why don't you carry on with your washing? I've finished my washing, thank you. I'll make some tea. The wood's rotten. It is, too. Morning. Good morning. Mr. Murphy? Oh, I am Frank Murphy. What can I do for you? My name is O'Leary. I'm employed at Bristow's. Oh, I. I'd like to speak to you for a moment, if I may. Is your wife at home? Uh, she's in the kitchen making a pot of tea at the minute. Do you want to speak to her, too? I think it would be best. Nothing wrong, I hope, sir. Could we go inside? Yes, of course. Uh, you'll have to excuse the mess. It's been a wet on night and there's mud everywhere. That's quite all right, Mr. Murphy. Martha! Yes, Frank, what is it? Have you finished? Oh, 
Uh, this is Mr. O'Leary from Bristow's. He says he wants a word with us. Oh, you'll have to excuse me. Is anything the matter, sir? I was asked to come. I'm sorry. What's wrong? Has something happened to Richard? Uh, no, no, Martha. Don't jump to conclusions. What is it, sir? Is he hurt? Badly hurt, I'm afraid. But he's not in any pain. Oh, thank God for that. Thank... He was caught in the cutting machine, ma'am. Cutting machine? I'm not sure how it happened, but from what I can gather, he, he was talking to some of the other men about a monkey's paw or something like that, and he leaned back and fell under the blades. Blades? Your son is dead, Mrs. Murphy. Richard! Oh, God! Oh, God. I'm extremely sorry. I, I really am only a servant. But the firm wishes me to convey their deepest sympathy to you both in your great loss. I am also instructed to say that Bristow's disclaim all responsibility. They admit no liability. But in consideration of your son's service, they wish to present you with a certain sum in compensation. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, ma'am. How much? Two hundred pounds. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believeth in me shall live forever. God is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He leadeth me through green pastures. There, though I walk in the shadow of death, I shall fear more evil. Thy rod and thy staff. My son is cold. Get it. And wish Richard alive again. Are you mad? Where is it? Where's the monkey's paw? It's there in the cupboard drawer. Hurry. Light the lamp. We've had one wish granted. Why not the second? Coincidence. Light the lamp. Martha, listen to me. He's been dead ten days. Besides... What? I didn't tell you before. His face. When I went to identify the body. Everything. He was destroyed, Martha. The face cut off him. There was nothing left. I could only recognize him by his clothes. If it was too terrible for you to see then... I don't care. He's my son. Do you think I'm afraid of my own child? I won't do it, Martha. Oh, yes, you will. And do you know why? Because you killed him. Martha! That's right. If you hadn't made a wish in the first place, my son would still be alive. You killed him. Now I want him back. He's dead, Martha. It's blasphemy. Then kill me. Wish me dead. I won't live without my son. Martha. Get 
the paw. Hurry! Yes, ma'am. Have you got it? Is that it? Yes. Then make a wish. Wish! I wish. Wish! I wish my son alive again. May God forgive me. Richard. Oh, my poor Richard. <gasps> what was that? A rat in the yard. I saw it earlier. He won't come. He'll come. I know my son wear that clothes. It's Richard! No, Martha, please! What are you going to do? I'm going to let him in? What are you holding me for? Let go of me! I must open the door! No! Jesus Christ! Richard! For God's sake! Let go of me! Richard, I'm coming! I'm coming, Richard! God! Damn you! I want my son! Oh, my poor boy, my poor child! Richard! Oh. Richard! Paul! Oh, Frank, help me! I can't open the door! The monkey's paw, where is it? Oh, Frank, Frank, help me, please! Oh, hell, oh, God, help me to find it, please! Frank! I must oh, find it! I can't open it, Frank! I must, oh, my God, I must wish! I must! I wish my son dead! Richard? My son is dead. My poor Richard. My poor Richard. In The Monkey's Paw, dramatised by Patrick Galvin from a story by W.W. W. Jacobs, you would have heard Edward de Souza as the Man in Black if Radio 4 hadn't chopped him out for their repeat in 1991. But you did hear Frank, played by Oliver Maguire, and Martha by Trudy Kelly. Richard was Alan McKelvey, Tommy Morris, Mark Mulholland, and O'Leary was played by Kevin Flood. The producer was Jeremy Howe.